Hello and welcome once again to the CGW Radio Podcast. This is the podcast for July 17th, 2006. Uh, I'm going to try something new today, and I'm going to say what we're talking about first. So if you don't like these topics after I say them, you can just leave, and we'll just talk anyway. That Sounds like hostile. a great idea. <laughs> that was kind of hostile. Anyway. Screw All right, you. Here's our, uh, today, we're going to do our little round of uh, what you plan first, get that out of the way. Then a few of the editors here spent uh, the day, last Friday, was it? Thursday. Uh, Thursday. Uh, at Electronic Arts EA's, their big summer showcase extravaganza, showing all their new stuff with at least one big exciting announcement there that we'll talk about. Uh, then uh, Darren, our, our uh, news, uh, what? Dork. I was going to say like nose hound. That's not a work. Darren's going to give us the news for the week. And we will make fun of him while doing so. And then we're going to answer some of your uh, reader mail. So that's the plan. We'll see if we stick to it. And helping me today are among the following people. Brian Scott. Darren Gladstone. Sean Elliott. And Sean Malloy. And uh, since you can't see us in person, you all should know that today, Ryan is sporting... One of my favorite uh, shirts of his. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a screenshot of it. We'll have to take a shot tell, of it. Tell the, the folks what your shirt says, Ryan. My shirt says, this is what cool looks like. <laughs> In the same you know, list. That is what cool looks it like, is. Ryan Scott. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> I don't think any of the rest of us could actually get away with that shirt. Only Ryan could wear that. Because the irony is just so deep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a compliment. I meant that in a good way. Yeah. So we're a little busy uh, today, y'all should know. We're going to do a, a regular long podcast, but I want you to know just because uh, I'm a little resentful that we're sitting here doing this. Oh, I'm making noises. I'm making noises with the prey lighter. We got prey a in, scene in, the in the mail game. today. A scene in the game. Yeah, your character has a lighter, and certain uh, certain exalted editors, I guess, got prey lighters. Huh? You did, only I got one? I think you did, yeah. So yeah. as you walk down the dark corridors of CGW, you can, you can light that right. thing up. Conveniently enough, I'm doing the review, too. And we all know that free lighters equals one star extra. At least. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's really a shame we're not doing star scores anymore. Yeah. If we were and you saw that I gave it four, you would know really it was the game was a three, but the lighter was a one. That's so. really why we got rid of the score, <laughs> so we could keep the stuff. <laughs> um. Okay, so what I was what I was saying was this is actually our deadline week, so we're pretty busy. We we're trying to put out a magazine right now. We're we're, we're finishing up the September issue. Is that right? Yep. September here in mid in mid July, and uh, you know, so what I'm saying is I want you to appreciate us. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we're doing this for you. Um, all right. So what do you what are you guys playing? What are you playing, Ryan? You're not playing Guild Wars, are you? I'm not playing Guild Wars right now. I've taken a break from Guild Wars to play an MMO that uh, is actually really good and doesn't get the attention it deserves. It's EVE Online. Hmm. And it's sort of a, it's a sci-fi MMO. Came out of Europe. Most of its player base is European. I think they've got somewhere around 125,000 total players or so. So it, not only do you have to play with other people, but you have to play with European people. Yeah. That's a double turn off for me right there. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Says the guy with the French wife. <laughs> um, people speaking mostly or typing mostly in English on it, or is it a... Oh, it's like an English uh, speaking So you're not thing. getting like yeah. German chat no. the whole time? I, th- they, I think they just put up a, a server specifically for China, mm-hmm. but the rest of the world plays on like this one one server. Mm-hmm. And um, it's it's kind of a pretty hardcore MMO. You know, there's... There's free PvP. You know, anybody can just run up and kill you if you're... It's all PvP? Well, if you're... there, There's certain, like, unsecure areas where you can you can huh. get killed by other players if you're not careful. And the, the, all the economy and everything is player-controlled. Um, mm. That's the one where you it, can, like, <clears throat> log off for a month and, like, level up while you're not even playing, right? Yeah, it has, like, this interesting skill system oh, where... Oh, that's awesome. I mean, the, the whole game, you, you're... Um, <laughs> I'd be the most lead player Sean, there. Sean, I'm falling asleep over there. Wake up, dude. <laughs> you love economy, <laughs> Europeans. <laughs> pump up the jam. Pump it up. <laughs> we'll get to the shooty bang-bang stuff in a minute, Sean. Well, you, you play the whole game. Uh, it's, it's all in outer space, so you never, you never like, set foot on a planet or go out Oh, it's there. all space. Yeah, so there aren't any orcs and elves in mm-hmm. this game. Are you, like, how are you surviving? Do you own right? a spaceship? 
But there's like Thargars that are like green skinned <laughs> aliens with pointy ears, and there's like. <laughs> but the they're not thing. elves. Yeah. And, 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 are, not are there elves. any space rats? The, no, no, there's. They uh, don't like boats and they don't like Thargars. There's no. All there is is like dudes in spaceships, huh. like space pirates and stuff. Isn't this game and, the one that gets the bad rap, though, for aside from all the, the sort of uh, in game society stuff that happens, but for just being essentially calculus with a <laughs> space screensaver attached to it? <laughs> it's, it's not. Well, well, when you first jump in and you, you start doing the tutorial, it looks like this really intimidating game. It looks like wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling what you. What does your like wallpaper look like, man? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, aren't the, <laughs> aren't the gods of the economy going to rip you off? Aren't the, the gods of industry going to make you their peon? And aren't the gods of war going to grind you to Thargar dust? Pretty much, yeah. That's kind of <laughs> well, so what, what, do you, why, what made you want to play this, and are you going to keep playing? Do you actually like it? I do, so far. I mean, yeah. I've only been playing for since Friday, so I've been playing mm-hmm. for about three days now. But um, it, it's, it's an interesting game. It's, it's different than... Would you recommend it to us? I'd recommend you check it out. I don't know. You guys you guys are all into like the whole wow thing, so Yeah. Well, this yeah, might be too nuts. this might be too hardcore for you. <laughs> like all the regular people. <laughs> no, but the the skill system, like like I was gonna say, um you have all these skills that you can learn and what what you do is you just set a skill, you can learn one skill at a time, and you set the skill to start learning and it'll tell you, you know, this skill will take so such and such hours to to get to the next rank. Okay. And it trains in real time. So even if you log off, it's it's still training. So I'm playing <laughs> E right the hell? now. So <laughs> what? Is that what Why every does this do skill? That? Every or, skill, yeah. And there, there's like no limit to to the number of skills. So will you, you just can level? Learn. Can I just come back in two years and be level sixty? As long as you're paying that monthly that, fee, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So is there just is no there chance you'd fee? ever catch up to like the highest guy in the server then? Oh yeah, so whoever playing. whoever logged on first is the highest well, level. The thing, there's like there's tons of different skills, right? Yeah. And you have you have skills that cover really general things like spaceship piloting, you know, pl- piloting like different different types of spacecraft, and then really minute things like how to use individual missiles, like light missiles versus medium missiles. You know, they each have like their own skill, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and to get to the highest ranks of a skill, like to go from rank four to rank five, which is which is the highest in any skill, it'll take like I have this one. It's like you'll have it will take you twenty days, such and such hours, you know. So it would take me like twenty days to get that one skill to rank five. Do you actually have to do anything to get to that rank, or just no. be alive? No, you have you just pay the membership fee. Exactly, yeah. pay a monthly yep. fee. So you don't have to survive. use the skill. You just have to. You just have to wait for the timer to count down. Sounds so, like hiring a power leveler, but like they just built it right into the game <laughs> mechanic. Well, you can only train one at a time, though. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, so what? When do you actually play the game? Is <laughs> just when you're logged off? Well, I mean, you're, you know, you're. <laughs> I'm leveling right now, and this is great. It's progress quest. <laughs> you log in. You can log in and like do stuff while you're, you know, while you're. The skill is training. The skill is just always training, no matter what you're doing. Okay. So you can run around. You can mine ore off asteroids. Mining ore. That's a. <laughs> you can go. Thank and, God, it's so different from WoW, though. You can fight like space pirates. Mm-hmm. You upgrade your ship. WoW is pirates. Yeah. <laughs> Does it have That's space pirates? Do. But do we have ninjas? No. No ninjas. I we we shouldn't be harsh on this game. You're the only one who played it. Can't what? say you're making the greatest case for it. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I'm only three days We've all in. heard good things okay. about it. We've all heard right? the bad yeah. stuff about it, too, though. Yeah. So, I mean, it's I, I kind of <clears throat> get the feeling so far that I it might I might run out of stuff to do other than so far all I've seen is like... Well, the great thing is you'll be leveling anyway. Yeah. Courier missions. It's a smart and, way to make, and mining. make people keep their... Uh, subscriptions active it's like well if i don't want to play maybe in a year i'll be so awesome that i don't want to start yeah. yeah all the interesting stuff i've read about sounds like it's the in player to player socialization yeah. stuff and creating the fun gameplay basically putting hits out on one another right getting a mole inside <clears throat> their faction and then basically making it pulling off a heist and all that sort and of i heard thing. it was like really right. merciless getting started like, you, like as soon as you come to that, like that newbie area you know, you know pirates just kind of like lying in wait for you to like show up right I, that's kind of like any you know MMO with PvP though, right? Mm-hmm. As yeah. soon as you get into, the... but even more so there, it was just like basically yeah. people just like kind of like waiting for you to come out, like, like just peek your head out of that like re- safe region, then you're dead instantly. Yeah, I would do that. <laughs> I've, been, I've been avoiding all that stuff for now. 
Welcome to PvP. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> uh, who else has been playing uh, anything different? Games? games. What are games? No, actually, uh, here's okay. My confession, I guess, is this weekend I wanted to play Battle for Middle Earth Two. Finally, I had a chance to play it and. Do I play it on the PC or do I play the Xbox 360 version? So I actually give me a break. That's not even a question. I dude. actually was curious. I tried it out. I was I, I was genuinely curious. Well, it's, it's out of sheer laziness. I got a nice big TV and a, and a, a big TV. You can't see anything. You can't tell what's what. <laughs> is that an elf or is that a dwarf? Let's just drag the <laughs> slow ass D pad on it and find out. <laughs> Sadly, I could see everything. Do you have an HD TV? Moving really? nice and slow. <laughs> yeah, ah, moving slow. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it, it looked okay. I mean, it's it's obviously not, but I mean, I have a nice big HD how, TV. How big is that TV? Okay. Fifty two inches. Okay. <laughs> so I actually downloaded the demo. I'm thinking just like to try it out just because I was curious too, and I had I don't have an HD. It's like thirty one inches. In so you're like squinting. I couldn't tell what was going on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think it's one of those cases where you really do need a large TV just so you can see all the, like the, the menu systems and all the things going that's, on. That's true more and more for 360 games. It's like I tried to Ghost Recon. Ghost Recon. I couldn't totally even read the yeah. goddamn instructions. <laughs> mm-hmm. What am I supposed to do? That's Hope why you should play the, was... on the PC. It looked like it was Eve Online text coming at me. <laughs> <laughs> Zenu speak. How how was the game? The game. I mean, it's the, it's the same game for more or less. Isn't it like slow ass gameplay? Like clicking on everything with your well, they do have the cursor. They, well, they do create shortcuts, and you can control. You can like amp up the cursor speed. So I mean, it's not like you're. you're it's not like you're totally hosed. I mean, it does do. It does do a, a, a decent job of replacing the keyboard mouse. Yeah, but there. but at the same point, I'm used. Like, I'm just so born and bred for it. Like I'm used to the hotkeys. I'm used to being able to draw and drag a box around. I just can't even imagine really playing a game of that style and that speed. You know, what? in that setting, like on a TV on the couch, that seems way more just sort of like a desk mm. keyboard. It's totally I, like I, a Quasimodo I, I, I type agree. game where you get all up in there and like, oh, I need to <laughs> generate fourteen more ogre. <laughs> Whatever, gorgeous. <laughs> I no, need no out way. another foundry. But you need to do that at your desk. Yeah, you, you know? do. That's what I'm in saying. You know, like all hunched up in there. Right. You got your like face. Right. Not with a beer monitor. and your wife or girlfriend hanging around. Yeah, the, thing, boom the, boom the thing I was, I was remembering though is that you know it's not like this is the first time this has happened. I mean, everyone like, back like six, you know, five or six years ago, uh, they tried to bring in Command and Conquer and Starcraft to the N64. <clears throat> right. And I mean. That was certainly a, that was a much less right, Starcraft sixty four. Yeah. yeah, I mean those were those were decent efforts for what they're trying mm-hmm. to do. But I mean, I think the significant thing here is that this really is really it looks really close to what the PC version was. Obviously not as high res, but mm-hmm. it controls okay. But yeah, ultimately at the end of the day, I I'm, I'm kind of deciding. Well, it's like playing on this. like a fighting game. I mean, it's playing Soul Calibur with the keyboard and a mouse. Yeah, or something, exactly. You know, it's just like. Right, certain games you can are made make for it happen, but, you, it, but why? Not right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm willing to bet they're just looking to maximize profit, like you know, because you know, Command and Conquer Three is going to come along, and they're going to say, hmm, maybe we can bring this over to the th- to the 360 as well. Right, it's probably a test run for that, right? Totally. Yeah, they'll they'll want to do that. Well, that'd be smart of them. Mm-hmm. I guess. I guess. I, I I always wonder if just the, bring us if more. knowing that Give ahead of time would too. inform the design <laughs> in such a way that like you're going to get the capped PC version. Yeah, that's always scary. Like, I would yeah. like to play Army of Two on, uh, we're kind of getting ahead to the EA thing, but they didn't show that, but that's <laughs> one of their console games, but it's all co-op, and that would be a great game to play on PC. The controls would work, it'd be a blast playing Because apparently the stuff, command, so. commandos of the future were That's a trade. Masks. I'll let them put Command and Conquer on the 360 if they give us the other. Okay. <laughs> Deal. That's it. All right. Done. <laughs> all right. You speak all for right. EA now? <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll do that for you, Sean. Okay. So what do you, what, what are the, what is the Sean brigade over there playing? Uh, Sean I've and Sean. i a bit of Prey. Pray. Just to make just it started today. it again. Got the box copy today. Playing some of that. beyond the demo. I like it a lot, and I just like the I. free lighter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I finished the game last night. I really liked it a lot. I'm kind of not understanding the the uh, mediocre reviews of that game. I, I don't get really? it. I was like, what do you? I'm want? still waiting to see the goose, though. I don't know. Like it's it's already feeling like. The fact that I've only been playing it an hour and I called, you know, we were talking about when you come to a stop, you know, it's either time to spirit walk or look at yeah. the switch on the roof. Mm-hmm. And you're saying, I'm already saying that <laughs> and I've only played it for an hour. And it, it's not reassuring when you're telling me that's the same the whole game. Well, yeah, it kind of is. But they, they do subtle variations on it. And I just like all the gravity stuff. I mean, I yeah. like, you know, it really reminds me in a good way of, of Descent back in the day. I don't recall playing a shooter like this in a long, long time. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, I, I really enjoyed it as well. And, uh-huh. I, and I guess the thing is, like, people are saying, okay, yeah, it's no, it's no Half-Life 2 Episode 1 or whatever. I'm like, you know what? There weren't many puzzles in Episode 1, and the ones that were there were just about as rudimentary using the same 
Well, I, I'm not comparing it to one. Well, That's I, kind of an odd. Uh, well, I'm not combo. saying. Well, I'm not saying you. I'm saying some people out yeah. there are saying. I don't think like, that. I think that this game holds up to Half Life Two, frankly. You're I, I feel kidding like, me. No, There's I'm no not. way. <laughs> then I'm in for a, a real treat. Then. But I, I, I like trying to figure out the weird gravity puzzle. Level. Like, finding the answer to those. It's not too. just a switch and turning right. it over. They but get I mean, more complicated. The whole thing is that. in this environment that looks like, you know, sphincters and stuff the whole <laughs> time, right? Yes. Okay. Because, I mean, well, Half-Life 2, you've got the coast level. You've got, next thing, you're in a Nova Prospect. I'm going through these out of order. But then you're in okay. Haunted House Land in Ravenholm. Then you're in an alien right. citadel. You're There's in a nowhere Dimash near city. There's the all variety. There's awesome of, variety that right. you're getting. There's no, no the graphic. You know, it looks just like Quake Four and Doom Three. Yeah, the whole way through. I, I that's, miss that. That's yes. part of the. And the, the enemies aren't getting any more intelligent, right? The Darren, enemies look Darren and play one. just like I had, I had one anecdote. Ex- I had one experience where they actually seemed pretty intelligent from the <laughs> situation for me. <laughs> then again, I'm just a retard. Yeah, it was so. just in comparison to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this guy's smart. <laughs> dur, 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 dur. <laughs> Fired back at me. <laughs> he shot at me, and I my, ran away. When I shot him. He grabbed his <laughs> leg right where I shot him. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Oh, actually, in this one situation, I forget which which uh, creature it was, but we're ha- you know we're having a shootout, and there's a, a health station nearby, and he's hurt, and he knows where it is. He has you know he has you know presence of the, of mind in the room, so he runs there, and he gets the health reheals. You know you know. Re- you know what if it was just accidentally jerking out though? Was did it, did it repeat? That's the key. If it's repeatable, because he could have been just like. He's programmed it like strafe left, strafe right, strafe left, no, right. No, he actually, Regardless of what you're doing, and he accidentally ran over that thing. And no, he, he actually went out of his way. He was signed that you're like, around. Dude, that was that was math. Did you see? That? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? I was no, just giving you a hard time. No, no, no. He actually he actually went. I back totally around. believe it. Yeah, yeah I mean, but I mean, but but it, but, it, but, to, but to Sean's point though, I mean, I only saw that once or twice. I didn't exactly mm-hmm. see it like every single time. It was mm-hmm. with a specific creature. So maybe like they jacked up the intelligence for it. I don't know. Yeah, th- there are certain things that. Half Life Two has way over a game like this. Yeah. Did you, did you find it difficult at all? Because one of the one of the issues that I'm still struggling with, whether I like it or not, is the death mechanic. Because yeah, when you get killed, that. you kind of go to the spirit world where you're allowed to freely shoot the you know the health power ups basically. The right. Your health, and then you go right back to where you were. It's like a spiritual duck. Hunt. I like it. <laughs> yeah, it is dude. a spiritual <laughs> what? <laughs> I expect a, a spiritual little, duck hunt. I expect a little hound to come and go. Yeah, it kind of is. But Except you got the Native American, you know. On the good side, though, like you were saying right on our way down mm-hmm. here, is like you don't have to deal with the loading screen. Yeah, there's no end to, like, game reload. The, the, only, the, only thing, the only thing that could on balance, though, is as you're playing it, you know, you've damaged some, like, like a boss guy who kills you. Yeah. And you come back, you're, you're re-healed, and then he's still damaged. So right. It's right. kind of like infinite quarters. It's yeah. Exactly. It's like infinite quarters. Yeah. I mean, you you basically can't not kill the boss. But if, no matter how bad you suck, eventually you're just going to wear him down because yeah. you'll just keep going to the spirit world and coming back, and he'll be down one it more kind, notch. It kind of feels like cheating to me. And I guess, I mean, you know, I'm the kind of person who quick saves as much as possible anyway, so I'm not sure if well, well, you know, that's, that's cheating see, too. Well, it's, yeah. I guess the same kind of thing, well, some but it kind of keeps you in the game the whole time. We need an IMDB-style database for games where we track bloopers and stuff because I'm wondering how Papa who teaches you the ancient secret, can't pull it off himself. Why didn't mm. he come back? Because he didn't have the glow, man. Anyway, you got to stay to the end. Oh, Papa does pull it off. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe he does. I'm not All even be right. Stay tuned. No spoilers here. Uh, I've been playing also uh, Team Fortress Classic uh, this past week. Yeah. In light of what we'll talk about next, but I wanted to fire it up and Did it hold up? relive the memories. You know, it's always fun. It's like I know the game so well. I played it so long. It's like it never surprises me, but all... Looking at it now, saying, okay, here, it's coming, you know, it's coming back, as we found out at the EA event. Um, and that was the big the big hype for me there, um, that the thing is actually real, that the sequel is mm-hmm. actually real. But just there's a little, you know, problems where um, everyone's got, a, you know, two grenade varieties in the game. It was part of the signature to the thing, and then they're specific to each class. But because of it, that's a whole lot of grenades to just be thrown out randomly and so if there's you know classic map would be two for it's basically two bases connected by a drawbridge and there's one alternate route underneath the underneath the water through a tunnel but basically everyone just goes out throws all their grenades onto the bridge and anyone trying to play offense just gets blown up without being able to do anything about it same thing when one of them finally gets over that bridge gets in your base with 40 percent health again he's faced with sentry guns full health defenders and everyone just throws their grenades and if friendly fires off, which it almost always is, they're going to get blown up in the splash damage. So my worry was how they're going to address that because it's been 
Team Fortress Classic has always been, you know, at least in my experience playing with clans and stuff, uh, very heavily weighted for defense. It's really easy, even with just two good soldiers, to defend almost any map. Whereas an offense takes, you know, a lot of concerted effort on the other. So I'm kind, I'm kind of hoping they they do something about that. But uh, otherwise, it's it's still so much fun because each class is like wildly different from the next, um, and that far more so than games like Battlefield or Call of Duty or something like that, where you're basically just choosing a different gun. And again, that's part of the secondary grenades. So it's it's kind of tricky how they work that out because. Um, you want to keep them because they they uh, distinguish your class, but at the same time, a little too much, too much of it causes problems. Yeah, it seems like wasn't that one of the first shooters to do that with the the multiple classes and having a really distinct difference between them. It was definitely one of them, if not the first. Darren, you I got think the. So. I mean, I, I mean, I'll, I'll have to I'll have to consult uh, Wikipedia or something. There's like. still like I mean, and the, the raddest part about that is that they're. They're completely unique. The stuff you can do with the medics, you know, a lot of the trick grenade jumps, the way that the sentry guns work for the engineers and how it's just always this challenge of finding the most opportune place to put it and one that's going to be safe because basically the enemy is using a nail gun to take it out and sneak up on it or grenades and stuff and messing with, messing around with the maps and finding like the right place to be doing what you want. If you're a spy getting on the enemy battlements, although mm-hmm. now everyone that's played knows to look for it, but you get up there, uh, feign like you're an enemy sniper and then you play dead and then because usually that area is totally covered with corpses of s- snipers so they go out and snipe you just pop up behind them stab mm-hmm. in the back and then go down somewhere else but all that stuff is really cool and uh what was nice to see about if you if uh you haven't seen the image that's up on steam of the new classes is that they went with this whole new art style for it and i think mm-hmm. it's great i mean that's going to be one of the big I don't know. It's not even such a debate as as much as I expected it to be. But basically, there's like one or two people out there in internet land that say, well, I wanted the muddy green and brown one that they showed back when at E3, you know, 2002 or whenever it was. Probably before that even. Yeah, it probably yeah. was. Um, but when you look at it now, the game, since they decided rather than, you know, some speculation said that they were going to do a, a version of it that took place in Half-Life 2 continuity, basically in what's called the Seven Hour War. Um, and since they didn't decide to do that, I think it's an excellent decision to do it. They to go with the route that they're going because when you look at the art in that game, it's either I mean, well, when you look at the gameplay itself, it's just ludicrous. It's two teams in these tiny forts going to cap each other's flags, and if you try to put like a realistic veneer over that, it's just going to emphasize how little sense it makes. It's ultimately a game world, so they have a very gamey looking mm-hmm. cool almost, style it almost to it. Like, like it almost looks like like people like the animated action figures. Yeah, they do. They look like mm-hmm. like vinyl action figures, kind of, mm-hmm. but with a really neat style to them. You know, I mean, it, I like it, it's, the, the, uh, it's the same art style that I saw they tried to use in Evil Genius back in the day. It's definitely like oh, they right? stole yeah. from Evil Genius. Yeah, I would say. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> they also look like they're because of the very stylized look that you're going to be able to tell people apart at a glance really easily. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's even better. I mean, instead of you just always could, like the... you always could in Team Fortress Classic, especially after the second batch of character models that they mm-hmm. released. But you can. I mean, they're really, they're even more iconic than before. I mean, the Scout's a skinny little guy with his socks pulled up over his shins. and <laughs> Ryan. So, Darren, Everybody looks at Ryan. Ryan. Jeff, <laughs> Ryan. Uh, One day he's just going to kill us all. The other thing about that art style that's neat is that we have so many shooters, and they all look either of the, the shiny, metallic, you know, space aliens, Quake and uh, Prey style, or the Battlefield ghost recon military style thing and this definitely gives it a, i mean it's distinct mm-hmm. and then even like counter-strike and day of defeat on source you know a lot of source games are starting to look really similar you, s- you start recognizing assets that get reused and so i think it's a great idea just something entirely fresh All right. yeah so okay so why don't we officially uh shift into i mean we started talking about that so that was ea's big announce i guess that was a big one but you guys spent uh, all day Thursday at EA's Summer Showcase. So they went through their whole big lineup, and Team Fortress 2 was the big announcement. But were there other good ones that came out of that show? Or Nope. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Talk about portals. Portal. Portal. Wow. It's so, another word for Schwinkdor. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So so everyone's always been talking about the portal. The portal's being used in Prey lately. And it's kind of cool. You you walk through one, and it sends you to another whole part of the ship or whatever. And, Messes with your whole sense sense of uh, reality. The thing is, can I just pause for one second? Yep. Somebody, can I say this one? Can I say this can, one? Just hold yeah. on. <laughs> hold, hold uh, on. <laughs> somebody on the uh, on the message board said how, or somewhere said how's how's a portal any different than just a door? 
you know it's a portal I to mean, enhance pleasure <laughs> okay and yeah because you're just going into it's just linear it's anyway. a sphincter to <laughs> yeah, i don't know it is warping around in space time i guess <laughs> The difference it's in this game is that a door is is basically a passageway where you'd expect it, and the portal is something that doesn't make sense. Instead of walking, yeah, you end up at another, you know, dropping in another Escher esque angle. Yeah, or, yeah. Sure. All right. Anyway, so the whole idea here is basically instead you instead of, instead of walking through the doors and portals that the uh, they're magic. The, it's a door with magic. <laughs> <laughs> a Doctor Strange door, if you will. <laughs> so as you walk through it. I mean, geez, no I'm magic with up. the K from the X Men. <laughs> all right, you're killing me here. <laughs> <laughs> Darren, tell us about portals. Fine. <laughs> Why can't you tell us? God's sakes. So the idea is, in Portal, you actually create the portal. So you you, you set the start point and the end point. So you can like, you could you could drop ah. you, could, you could drop a portal underneath a machine gun uh, turret and then put it in the ceiling above. You can create this infinite loop of this the machine gun just falling through the, hmm. the ceiling. That's kind of like a, a subtle knife. Did any of you read, guys read the Philip Pullman books? You know, I'm talking oh, about the, his dark materials. Yeah, or whatever. the subtle knife was uh, the second book, and in that book, you could like cut a hole in the, you know, in the universe, and then like step through it into slip another gate generation. Yeah, yeah. Dude. <laughs> I'm well, say... I didn't know you knew the lingo. <laughs> oh, 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 I guess you read it too. I'm going to say regular doors cannot do what Darren just described. So Correct. Yeah, I think difference. you're right. Okay, so uh, that's that's the basic premise of the game. It's more, it's kind of like a, a Lost Coast kind of like add on into. The premise is what to show off the technology. It's to show off the technology exactly, but you can also. But it's like it's like a puzzle solving game. Was what it mm. seems like. Basically, it's like you have to get through. You get get to certain points in each area, and you do that by manipulating I, your. Portal I heard gun. a few other examples from someone who I can't name who had actually got to test this technology. It turned out more than a year and a half ago, and uh, one example he gave, he actually tried it. Had no idea what it was for. And why could, can't you name him? Because he's in our building, and he oh. it was it wasn't an NDA, but it was. He, Never mind. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's not go there. so an example would be, you know, there's this ball of energy going around. You're immediately thinking of the orbs in uh, Half-Life 2. Mm-hmm. But uh, and basically what you need to do is you need to fit it into some place. So as it's passing around like a pinball, you throw up a portal that's an entry place for it, or you get the exit first. So you basically set up, you know, a path or a conduit for it so that it's, say, it's passing by you, it enters the portal, and then it goes out the other direction, but up in, up up in the up. sky somewhere. Mm-hmm. And then fits into some other place, hmm. and then you need to get yourself up there once that door opens. But it sounds like a kind of like a, you know consoles. Metal Gear's got uh, the VR missions bonus mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. where they kind of like take the fundamental gameplay and they just like boil it down to. Hmm. So it seems kind of like that. Yeah, it is. Kind of, so it's it's kind of like, a, it feels kind of like a VR separate missions. standalone game. It's or? a separate standalone yeah. game that's going to ship with Half Life episode two. Nice. That's a lot. A lot of, that's a lot. That of game and Team for Fortress Two. I mean, like Team Fortress Two is going to come in. So all of a sudden, well. Valve's like, you know, they're pretty busy. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're working hard now. They were kind of radio silent there for a while. Now they're just. <laughs> and so, and so actually, something kind of crazy that a lot of people aren't really kind of touching upon as much is that um, they worked out the source engine so that they can co-develop and like basically create the same, so that they can have a game simultaneously release on three platforms if they need to. So when by the time when Half Life Episode Two comes out, it's going to be out on the 360, possibly the PS3 as well. Not the Wii. Wee. That's not going to work. No. <laughs> it's just the gravity gun would be awesome with that controller. How fun would that be? They're already I'm, making I'm it. Kidding. It's no, called uh, what Elibits or something. And all it is is basically imagine if you had a gravity gun demo, but all you could do is point the gun around and pick stuff up. Well, what the hell and do you do different room. in Half Life Two? <laughs> That's all. You yeah, but you great. can't you can't throw it. There's no the objective is just to pick stuff up, oh. find little elements. Oh. Oh, and by the little way, actually, bits. there was one thing uh, during his speech. Uh, Gabe was talking about this one bit of freeware uh, that's out right now called Narbicular Drop or something like that. Narb- Basically, he referenced this bit of freeware. It's, it's a game That's all about Elrond portals. Hubbard stuff, right no, it there. Is. No, no, yeah, it's a, it's a really goofy. Name. It's, it's a really goofy game with like princesses and dragons and stuff. But you actually create these portals, and it's using the same kind of idea and technology. Mm-hmm. And it's Narbicular. Yeah. There Have there go. been any good Elrond Hubbard uh, video games? Oh, I'm sure they made a version of. <laughs> Have they made Battlefield, Battlefield Earth? Earth you think? Good. Yeah. Really isn't really good. <laughs> like, did it open your eyes? Why don't they have where you turn your uh, DS, Nintendo DS into whatever they call that a clay spiritual table? reader is? No. <laughs> their the little... E- uh, the E-meter? Their, yeah, their oh, E-meter. The e-meter. Oh, who's the, who's the dude that you meet? Who's the big dude? Zenu. Oh, Zenu. Yeah, he's the big Zenu and John Travolta. Yeah. 
So would he be, is he like he's, the second? He'd be the final boss. He sits at the right hand. He's like he's like he's like level fifty. He can no, like, well, the, you'd have to worship him. Like you have to worship him like, like enough to to solve it. You don't fight with him. <laughs> Ryan's shaking his head. Ryan's imagining all the. We're letters. all gonna if we all we're disappeared die. next to me. <laughs> yeah, there's no where we went. Yeah, Tom Cruise got to us. <laughs> we went yeah. to just kill them all. We're up in heaven with Zeno. What's your crime? What's your crime? Zeno's bad though. Uh, <laughs> so where were we? So uh, we were talking about uh, we, we were talking we're back about to the EA, EA thing. thing. Was, so it, was there other good stuff? No. They, they showed uh, <laughs> basically a CG for the White Council, which is the Lord of the Rings RPG, also coming to PC, set prior to the films and the novels. Eighty Whoa. years. Oh. So uh, an RPG. It's an action RPG. They kind of like yeah. they're, they're trying to like make it out like it's a really high res Diablo kind of thing. Well, the, the CG they showed was just amazing. It's a target and they were video. Like, you know, this is our target video, and we have every reason to believe it will look exactly like this. Oh, and we have no reason whatsoever to believe it's going to look anything like that. <laughs> Why so, so skeptical? You, you always open because it looked too trouble. good. It was like well, you know, they showed us with CG. In, in all in all in all like, fairness, though, like I remember like a year ago when the they showed off Fight Night Round Three. And they're like, it's going to look just like this. And everyone's like, yeah, right, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it, it came out, and on the 360, it looked just like they said. I believe. I yeah. think that was one of the few things when they showed uh, for PS3. They're like, okay, that one we believe. Yeah. That, okay. But I'm, I'm talking, saying- this was like Kill Zone stuff. <laughs> if, you, if you remember the, the Electronic Entertainment Expo we're talking about, it was 2005. And yep. for one of the PS3 demos, they showed computer-generated footage that they passed off as real-time for uh, for the system. And it was kind of like that. It's just your gut says this. An action RPG is not going to look like this. Right. I mean, like, it, it wasn't like, it was like Pixar maybe four years ago or something. Okay. What they showed was of that quality. Uh, yeah. What's the game called again? Uh, White the Council. White Council. Lord of the Rings, the White Council. The f- White Council. <laughs> Formerly known as Project Grey Company. Hmm. You know what? Uh, other than that. Prove us wrong. I mean, so I, I went I, from I, I, Grey to White. Right. A lot of this EA, uh, what they call the Studio Showcase, it seemed like, you know, they're redheaded stepchildren that they wanted to get attention for. So it's like they could draw a captive audience, get people from around the, the world, you know, international press there, and say, you know, hey, there's this big event that's going to be worth your time. And you get there, and it's like there is hands-on on their sports games, you know, which well, is great man. if you're into sports. Mad No 7, you're not a big fan? But, I mean, just saying, I mean, <laughs> that that's never – it never is as exciting as, you know, sure. something else. Uh, Superman Returns. And then Superman Returns, which is just, <laughs> like, shamefully bad, and then – the Godfather 360, which is, you know, you've already played it, but look, here's some high-res textures of crap geometry. Uh, and, uh, what, the, what the hell were you saying about the gameplay and stuff, Superman, before we came on about... Think about the city yeah. having a health bar instead of Superman. Yeah, Superman the has no a, life bar. The city has a life bar. Well, 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 Superman is invincible, so that's all the <laughs> uh, gameplay right. mechanic. But, so if the city <laughs> dies, you die. Or yeah, the game's if over. you don't save the city, then... But I walked up, and he was the, <laughs> the guy was playing, and he was Bizarro. Who's like the evil Superman? He's like Superman, but purple, so he's evil. But anyway, <laughs> talks funny. All too. the citizens were running around frightened, and then the bizarro guy just kind of lets the controller idle, and then all this, a couple of the citizens like got up on his back and did their cowering <laughs> animation like halfway in him and on him. And I was like, I've had enough. Uh, of this. Poor guys. <laughs> poor guys. Turned around and took a look at the Sims Two pets. Also, you know, <laughs> you shouldn't the pets? Superman game have been out already? It should have. They were gonna. Try they, they were to do gonna. It at the but time they, with the they, movie, but yeah, they, I guess. Uh, yeah, but that's a legacy. Though. Has delayed it till the DVD or something like that. This is a legacy. That's what it like. I mean, you can't. What What's a good Superman game? Pretty much every one? Superman game that's ever been released for any platform has been the worst game of its respective generation. Also, I mean, how could it be late? <laughs> this, this movie's been in development for like ten years. Thousand well, it has years. nothing to do with that. With the. He's fighting space dragons and Final Fantasy like Bahamut guys and stuff. Or <laughs> <laughs> you say it. Seriously, you see it? And then Bizarro, he's throwing, like, Bob's big boy <laughs> signs at people. Really? <laughs> Screw that game. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, are we, is it even coming out on PC? No, I don't think Okay, so we're wasting we're even more that. time. Yeah, we're trying to change A subjects. A crappy so Superman game that's pretend, not even on PC. <laughs> we heard it here first. Yeah. Talking about cr- I, I think it's time for news. Okay. Is it time for news? Okay, we're going to go on to Darren, Darren's <laughs> news bit. <laughs> We need a theme you. song for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need a song theme. <laughs> you got to read it in a nerd <laughs> voice. Yeah, someone do the teletype sound. Today in video Today gaming. in video gaming news. For your daily dose of gaming goodness. No, no, no. <laughs> don't, don't do that. that. Do no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so first up, uh, this, this, this happened late last week. Mark, Mark Rain at, at, a, at the Develop Conference in Brighton slammed episodic gaming. Ah, uh, yeah. Mark Rain. Tell the folks who Mark Rain is. Mark Rain, VP of Epic Games. 
who is never never soft spoken, always has an opinion. I love yep. the guy. Mm-hmm. Here's what he says. Uh, I've heard a lot of insane talk about episodic content. Very little of it makes any actual sense. It's a broken business. And then he goes on to say, customers are supposed to buy half a game for 20 bucks, then wait six months for an episode. When I put a game down, I want to try a new one. Episodic games that offer faster turnaround will inevitably be using a lot of recycled content, walking through the same environments, and shooting the same enemies with the same weapons. He pretty much sharded on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. But how do you really feel? Yeah. Well, he I mean, kind of did. He's he? got some valid. I mean, he's basically, got, he's, he's got, like reiterating what all of our fears are in the worst case scenario. A- absolutely. You're getting the same old crap if it's coming rapidly, and otherwise, the wait seems so long that you're, you know, you're thinking, well, why not just give us another full game? And those are those are valid. Well, those are absolutely criticisms. those are absolutely valid. The one, the only the one thing that was kind of running through my head is, can't the same thing be said for full to, for full games that aren't episodic that recycle content and have the same weapons and you know very little new imag- imaginative stuff? Your expansion packs and stuff, you mean? And then you're waiting for expansion yeah. packs to come out, and there's your episodic content. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, can any of us defend against what he said there? No, I, still, I actually, no, actually just, we have to see. You know, it's like we yeah. have to it's, see it's what still, happens. It's, it's still early enough. I mean, like no one's actually like figured out the right pricing model. We haven't yeah. ever seen work. the second episode of anything right. yet. Exactly. So. so in a way, that's the only real criticism of what he did was a sort of like, you know, kind of ranting, kind of prematurely there. Mm. It's a little bit of an old man get off my lawn thing, isn't it? <laughs> you know, ah, it's episodic gaming. Well, I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot. back in my day, was, we had full games. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of companies now that are taking, you know, so, you know, he's going to start taking some big gambles with it. You know, Valve, obviously, and Tell, right. Telltale's banking their whole business on episodic gaming. And don't we feel like so far that Valve did it kind of well? I mean, I liked episode yeah. one. I, 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 I enjoyed it. I, it's, I got it's got the reuse bucks. stuff that he's complaining about, but what we've seen of the next one looks like it's going to introduce a lot of new stuff. Right. But then, you, but then you're waiting more than six months for it, aren't you? I mean, how long? Are they no, it's it? about. It'll be about six months. It will be okay. Sure. And that's better than. I mean, traditionally, what what's Valve been between full sequels? You know, years or yeah, even yeah, half a decade or whatever. I'd say expansions, yeah. but it's kind of like you have to count their own stuff, not something that they farmed out. You know. Yeah. And hey, what else you got on the news <laughs> ticker there? All right. Uh, Scoop. What, 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 <laughs> got your little hat. Ne- next up, <laughs> whatever whatever anti terrorist action happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Okay, the uh, okay. According to a Las Vegas TV station at KLAS TV, uh, uh, Mayor Oscar Goldman and other Vegas officials plan to fight the release of Rainbow Six Vegas. Uh, nice. <laughs> what they're afraid it's going to give Vegas a bad name. Exactly. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is that place I saw in the video game. There's <laughs> crimes there. <laughs> they, they, they plan to they plan they plan to fight the release by. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, G- Goldman Goodman says. That uh, th- that uh, Rainbow Six Vegas is based on a false premise, and that the game, quote, could be harmful economically, and it may be something that's not entitled to free speech protection. Oh, oh what's the right. premise of the game? That's <laughs> what? So I mean, basically, a, so it's gonna, a, a, it's, town, a town where you can get drunk at the roulette table, meet a hooker, and then <laughs> <laughs> and then go up to your room, and and a game based upon fighting terrorists is uh-huh. offensive. Yeah, hey, with, with a, a mob of, guy for a mayor. <laughs> but a bunch of little old ladies are going to play this game and stop dropping their quarters into the machine. That's that's nuts. That's <laughs> that's I mean, I didn't even. That's all you can really say. I'm just that. aghast <laughs> at that. I didn't even know they cared about their reputation there. I thought they're cultivating the reputation that, like, you know, this is Babylon. You know, yeah, anything goes. These yeah. are the end times. Of San Francisco Vegas. rush. They uh, sued uh, city of San Francisco. Sued a. Well, who was it? Atari on that one? Because they weren't in a rush. Well, they just said it's, it's, it's not representation uh, representative <laughs> of the dr- driving style out here. <laughs> <laughs> it's not right. I, He's right. not joking, Chroma <laughs> joke. <laughs> but yeah, you get the deal. I mean, you could say that yeah. about all of all the cities that have New York in it and this and that. It's like right or books like and any on, city to protest. Don't Las write Vegas? a bad poem about uh, yeah, that, it, Las Vegas. I know it sounds yeah. like just video games are evil bandwagoning. So yeah, let's hop on board. Their whole too. city is evil. <laughs> I mean, I like it. But they brag about it. <laughs> Their city Real is Grand city. Andreas, uh, San Andreas. Yeah. Wow. I don't, I don't okay. Get that at all. But. Well, that was a good news bit. We'll have to all follow right. up with that. We'll, we'll check Let's back see, on We should invite soon. the uh, mayor of Las Vegas onto the podcast. That would be nice. <laughs> Next time I go to Vegas, I'll, I'll look Let's him up for your you. old man voice. <laughs> 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 you can stop playing games in my town. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what else there? All right. Okay, apparently Hungary is full of space pricks. <laughs> so, That's all you need to say. Hungary <laughs> is full of space pricks. Well, like, we didn't know that. <laughs> okay, I mean, here, what does that mean? Ryan's face. 
doesn't like that. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this is from, uh, from GamePolitics.com. Um, I'll just read it for starting off here. Kill any non-Romanian alien prick in cold blood. That's the goal of, of a mission in Romanians in Space, a game being developed for the PC. Yes, PC gaming isn't dead, folks. Uh. <laughs> it's being developed by a 20 21-year-old 20 programmer from Romania. So let me see. The game's alien pricks are not entirely of the outer space variety. They include ethnic Hungarians living in Romania. As, uh, oh. as, as the plot of Romanians in Space explains, the remainder of former... Basically, this is a far-flung future where apparently Romania now rules, conquers the world and is in space and stuff. Sounds like why does he say? Uh, why does he say? Uh, kill any non-Romanian alien prick. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what aliens out there are Romanian? Uh, apparently, <laughs> a whole lot of them. They, they 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 get around. They get their freak on in space. It's a double entendre with the word alien. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> it truly is. There's lots of double entendres. Mm. They form some sort of quadruple entendre. Okay. So uh, anyway, apparently. Um, uh, this is, this, it's it's just uh, meant as a joke. It sounds <laughs> like it should be a flash game. Yeah, I, yeah, I, like torture I, I, someone, I, I ch- whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, I checked out the <laughs> screenshots. I mean, it looks like you know, it look, looks like it could be like freeware or something you'd pay like you know ten bucks for or yeah. something. But it's not like that big. I mean, it's. I think he's just kind of. He might even be just generating. The, yeah, the it's buzz, one of those the hype things. things it's what, like it's gonna get all this news. Just <laughs> like you'll you'll see a news report about you know here's this game. Where you murder immigrants, you know, because we have like a legal catcher and stuff that have popped up on, but they're kind of missing the whole thing. It's like these are coming out of people's like garages and anonymously, and then not. I mean, I'm not saying they're 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 right or they're moral, but there's part of that whole that milieu of like just extreme internet, you know, just trying to be offensive, trying to be South Park, basically. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's a, a single person expressing himself through game design in this case, mm-hmm. rather right. than like He's just being stupid. The game industry. Like being... Escape from Neverland was another good flash. Yeah, one. exactly. It was a real good one. Sure. Uh, really good. Well, I'm, well, I'm, I'm sure. just sitting here reading that summary of this game. It's just, what the hell? <laughs> Ceausescu has taken over the United States and then the Earth. <laughs> <laughs> and the Earth. You, you got some like who? Who is the guy making this game? He needs some help. <laughs> it's an angry Romanian so, who's yeah. got some Hungarian uh, Romanian next door Ale- neighbors. Alexandru Duta, cutting you line need help. in front of yeah. We're sending you out a lifeline right he now. He needs a therapist rather than making a game. He needs mistake. a hug. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. so keep a keep a look out for Romanians in space. <laughs> <laughs> the demo coming is coming soon to right your now. PC. Sounds like the first must-play game of the year. <laughs> that's right. That, that, actually, that's the game that changes everything, from what I hear from a... Yeah, I've always wanted to kill non-Romanian <laughs> aliens before. <laughs> now's your chance. Because there are so many Romanian aliens in space, I just... Was... Most of them in Prey were probably Romanian. <laughs> Romanian aliens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Do you got anything else there? Well, do, uh, do we have... Hound? Well, you know what? For the sake of time, should we probably just skip ahead to... Uh... How are we okay. doing on time? Yeah, now? we're already at uh, over like 40, 40 minutes. Really? Well, 40 you know, minutes. the people like the long podcasts. They do. Okay. All I've right. spoken to the people, and that's what they've told me. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, just see, see, uh, see if we continue next time, I guess. Okay. So more news coming more next news? time. More news. Tell them. Let's tell them. Oh, well, tell them now? Some kid, Bobby, pre ordered uh, a video game today. Oh, no way. That's really? the news. All right. Yeah, move Thank on. You. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what game or what That was Sean's what. news. There's an update. That's why Darren does the news. Typical <laughs> Bobby teenager. <laughs> Sean's news. I have clean shoes on today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we'll, we got a lot of uh, reader mail. Uh, we actually always do. Usually we just ignore it. But we're going we're gonna to pay attention because we care, because we love you. Uh, so we're going to go over a few that came up on the message boards this week. Uh, I'm going to read... Uh, so I'll read the one about uh, physics, huh? Because that was a good one. Yep. From uh, our pal uh, Drews Three, or is it Druz? I'm assuming it's Drews. He's a Drew. Drew Drew's is good. Drews right, on our uh, on, on the message board, and I'll I'll read this uh, verbatim. Uh, why isn't anyone taking a dump on PhysX when clearly it's an overpriced piece of shit? <laughs> <laughs> and then he adds as this an is the aside, best part. <laughs> I know poop being dumped on top of shit is redundant. Shut up. So, <laughs> which is a good point. But why aren't point. why aren't we uh, dumping on this overpriced piece of shit? <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a damn good question. Jared has had more experience. Well, actually, we, we, I think right? we did dump upon that piece of particular shit in the. Uh, it, what, what was the issue we reviewed that in the July issue? 
Yeah. Yeah, we um, didn't dump on it, did we? Well, we kind of did. Yeah, we said we said that it's way. Well, it's just what there's no software for. That's it. the problem. And the, right. And, the, and the, well, the thing is, there's only one game that even kind of supports it right now, and it's Ghost mm-hmm. Recon Advanced Warfighter. And and that's not a game that's really. It's not built from the beginning, optimized for it. Yeah, I mean, the, there's how, how much is it, uh, it's going to take advantage of, you know? Well, I mean, like, you see more part, you, you see a couple more particles in the environment and stuff like that, you know, and big deal. Mm-hmm. But but actually, the funny thing, well, the sad thing, I guess I should say, is that the drivers were so unoptimized that when you started playing it with, and it would see your, your AGA card, the game would actually slow down further. Mm-hmm. So basically, the, the, the AGA card was actually making your game worse. That sounds awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and no. only, for how much money could you spend to make your game look worse? A mere, th- a mere 300 bucks to turn, turn your oh, game into awesome. a slideshow. 300 bucks? Yeah. Damn. Awesome. But you know, the thing is, it's, it's early technology, and I think they, re- I mean, they have to a really rough start. Well, it's like the first video card, the first graphics card. Exactly. You know? I mean, exactly. At, at some point, it was like, it was a joke. What mm-hmm. is this? We don't need it. Right. You Somebody's got to pave the way. It's not to say that a, that a physics card, a dedicated physics card, is, is never going to happen in the future. Well, Do I, they I, advertise in our magazine? I don't think so. No. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd say you guys are wrong. I was just love the, it. It's the uh, software. It's like, where's the... Well, no, I, I think, like, like, there was one game in particular that was the only one I've seen that actually was built with, it, with this physics technology in mind, uh, Self Actor, and it's still really early on, but that game actually shows a lot of promise, and... That's the thing is they I can't need- even get interested. Why the why would I want a physics card? I got enough cards in my machine. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I I think the rest of a card for theoretically everything. it could be a, amazing for you for the I mean the the number of things you could do with gameplay instead of having your CPU chug when you're in Half Life and you throw a grenade at a rack and like more than the threshold of I objects guess. Just goes Just put flying. all the cards in one. Uh, a physics card, a graphics card, a sound card. Mm. I mean, just well. I mean, well, well, think about it this way. A lot of people they don't even. I use have it. to buy an engine, a transmission, <laughs> tires. <laughs> Why don't they make one thing? Well, that's I don't got buy an engine with the tire on it. They and a transmission. Yeah. No, what's no they, what's they call the a brakes. car? Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to buy them all separate. <laughs> Can't the brakes be optional? You could buy. I'm. I'm sure. If what, it becomes, do you build your cars? If it becomes popular enough, you'll be able to order a PC that's. That's got what that I want. I don't want to have to buy my. But it's just it's really transmission think well, Dell's offering it up in their new computers in the uh, XPS hmm. 700s, and hmm. um, they are. I mean, I think ultimately what they're trying to work toward is getting it on the motherboard or some kind of like you know close to the core. So you don't even think about it. Like you buy the That's system and it's saying. there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those. If the support isn't there, it's right. Fail I'm things. surprised. Like games like Crisis of any game would totally be able to use it. Like yeah. that would be an example. Yeah. So instead of just having a couple explodable barrels and boxes move, yeah, you'd have like every you know well every leaf pretty much is moving. And and not only just you know textures moving around, but actual geometry that's moving and interacting, and that theoretically the card would help it. Or run imagine a lot. That's ima- the kind of thing. Imagine you doing multiplayer and you're like you're trying to like crawl through like the grass or something. You're trying to like you know not be seen, and you get up and you crawl, you go too fast, and all this all these other blades of grass around you start moving. It gives away your that's position. Gonna, that'll be troubling though to sync up that many. Like that's already one thing where with yeah. crisis multiplayer, you know how there's such a big deal about all the trees and stuff are breakable, but. Yeah. Once you've got thirty people on the server, you you start trying to match up how every leaf is moving right, and every right. tree's falling. And then you have to assume that everyone work, has a physics you know? card. And stuff so you like just that. do, yeah. And if you're building a game with physics in mind, and there's a bunch of people who don't have it, suddenly their machines are going to just not be able to run it because that's not stuff you can you can just turn off if you don't want to no. use it. Oh no, actually, that's, to so make it are, any there good, are, there are switches. Yeah. It's just the transition period is always going to be balls because it's like to do anything good with it, you have to make something where that's the only. You have to have it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You like need a the, Tomb Raider. You need a you need a, uh, a, a Quake. Yeah. Basically. Otherwise, like it's like Ghost Recon. If you can run it with or without it, there's never going to be that big of a disparity between it to show off what it can do. Did you say it was it was going to be balls? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You and Ryan. Look, Ryan looks so upset by that. Look at him. Sweaty balls, Ryan. <clears throat> I don't upset want you. You that's to bad, right? If something it. looks like balls. Well, it's not I just good. Want to be hip with the lingo. <laughs> that's good. That's balls. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's bad. You never, oh, I, you yeah. Never it's greasy balls. Like, it's ass. That's butt. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. There. Can you, but Busted. how do you rank those things? Ass, butt. <laughs> butt all right, all. that's, okay. never mind. Yeah. Let's not go off on that. They're all doors in prey. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all one way. <laughs> Wait, what was your theory earlier about the, 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 the smart sphincters? It wasn't mine. I just wanted to give, when we were talking about prey, I forgot. I was going to give a shout out to the guys at Something Awful. Uh, dot com and they had this awesome review of the demo and they just pointed out that you can measure uh an a you know any species sort of like level of technological advancement by how efficiently it uses an energy source and then anyway that uh it's well known 
that a sphincter is the most efficient <laughs> means of opening and closing something. And like a, <laughs> like a real human sphincter that can differentiate between a fart oh. and a turd, the shrink oh, doors and pray. <laughs> can tell, I'm sorry, Mom. No, they can tell when Tommy should go through and when not to let him through. <laughs> and they do that. Yeah, That's right. true. And it's otherwise inexplicable, but this guy figured it out. And Ryan I just has his him. head in his hand. T- Tommy. This is not the weekend I'm going to have my mom check this out This is why we were going Much love to time. those guys. That was <laughs> yeah. This is why we stop at 40 minutes. <laughs> Tommy, shut up a deadly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, well, let's try to keep a couple... Uh, do a couple more of these, and let, let's keep it clean. <laughs> Uno mas. Good luck. Uh, the nu- nuclear don? Uh, nuclear. Wh- nuclear. <laughs> nuclear don uh, from uh, Charizard. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter kills me, Bulbasaur. Let me just, let me just clarify here. His, his quote-unquote real name is Charizard Bulbasaur, <laughs> but his nickname in quotes is Laughter kills me. So. By the way, that, if that is your real name, that is the coolest name ever. I'm yeah. giving my kid that. That would be a great name, you know. <laughs> you, when do you want to hear that read off in class? Mr. and Mrs. Bulbasaur. Yes. Yeah. Bulbasaur, Charizard, Bulbasaur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyway, he asks about Nuclear Dawn. Is Nuclear Dawn a fake? I was pretty excited for this game, but I have seen a lot of comments by people formerly working on the game on different forums supporting this conclusion. And I'll answer that uh, to the best of my ability since I, I wrote our last story, our, our only story on Nuclear Dawn. Um well, for, for the home audience, what what is Nuclear Dawn? Basically, it's a mod coming out for the Source Engine, and it looks fantastic, especially by mod. I mean, it looks good by non-mod standards. Uh, so it's a great-looking game. It's kind of uh, similar, at least in design, to, uh, what is it, Natural Selection, which was a Half-Life 1 yeah. mod, mm-hmm. um, but, but sort of set in a Jinro kind of Neo Tokyo future. Um, and... Anyway, the, the the stuff looked great. They got people that are working on it. They're moonlighting that have either either worked at, in the past with big name developers, or are working with them now, or did some work for Nuclear Dawn and then left and then worked with them. So, and then worked with the big companies like Splash Dance. 